Welcome back to TT. Finally, we are here. And the bikes went out yesterday for the first time in practices. And boy, what a day it was. The sun was shining. The racing was finally on and some amazing times were being delivered. So Mr. Matt Stevenson is with us today. You know many of the big boys. You can see them getting interviewed all of the time. Um, so we've come here to have a chat and a check in with Matt Stevenson and how it went for him to be back here on Manx Roads. Matt, welcome back. It's good to be back yeah, after three years. God, it was a long wait, wasn't it? Just a little bit, yeah. You just, just like after 19 and then I bust my arm in 19 and crashed at Grieber, brought that in three places. So it was like, I'll get that fit, get it ready for next year. And then it all just never happened. All bikes were ready. Well, one of the bikes were ready, but yeah, just disappointing. But anyway, we're back now, so. And how's the mindset coming back to uh, race on the roads again after something like that? Uh, after the crash? Yeah, it was I'd, like the first time I went through on the race bike, it was a bit like, oh, no, the idea. Uh, but apart from that, it was after then, you've just, just kept going. You don't really think about it anymore. You can't think about stuff like that too much. Or you won't ride. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you're concentrating that much on the corners and you don't think about what could go wrong. You think about what goes right, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you just sort of, it just, <clears throat> it just sort of levels itself out. You just get on with job. So tell us a bit about yesterday then. So the sun was shining. What were the conditions like for you to be back on the road? Bang on, really. It was a little bit, maybe a little bit windy on mountain. I think John McGuinness has said it was windy, but when you're doing 170 mile an hour, it's windy anyway. And it's a, I know what he's saying. It was a little bit of side wind and stuff, but no, it was uh, it was pretty bang on. There couldn't have been a lot better. Plenty of wildlife flying about. I cleaned some little bird up on my shoulder. So, but yeah, it's, uh, these things happen. But yeah, no, it was really good. A lot of a lot of bugs on winds on, on visor. So weather was good. Yeah, fun. Yeah, really good fun, yeah. Just my neck, so I'm like 6'4 and BMs. <clears throat> We've got screen off at the moment, but he just needs to, we just need to get it a bit higher. <clears throat> like Dean, Dean Harrison's just, his dad's over there, he was just over, we were talking about screens and stuff earlier. And he was like, Northwest, you get tucked in, because it's a straight, you don't have to like lean out to turn the bike, so you're all right. But you come in, there's that many corners on such fast straights, you're always trying to hang off, and as soon as your head pops out of the bubble, you're just trying to, it's like just someone pushing on your forehead, just trying to rip your head off all the time. So my neck's sore today, yeah, we need to get a bit, a bigger, a lot bigger screen on. It's interesting that, isn't it? Because I was speaking to some of the other lads yesterday, and they were all suffering with the same issue. Mm. So how how do you prepare for that? How do you prepare your body for for something like that? You can't really, unless you're sort of riding a bike inside, you know, every week inside out. It's just you don't really, you can't really do it if you know what I mean. I don't know. I'm going to have to work out some sort of neck exercises for next year. I think <laughs> turn up with like Mike Tyson neck. I don't know because as it is, it's. Uh, it's going to be cruel doing six laps like it's going to take some doing yeah after two i was like i need to fall in the end i was glad that you glad you had to come in a bit for fuel after two anyway because it was it was about giving up on job but neck like yeah you've got plenty of practices to prepare the body for it anyway yeah either that or it'll warn it out with then so it's <laughs> it's one or other that's gonna happen yeah but we'll just have to see really i got physio again at half uh, at quarter past three they did a good job yesterday uh little physio i can't remember what the name is now i <laughs> think free, free physio we get up and uh, up at paddocks so that's that's really good yeah so tell us a bit about the lap times you were getting yesterday then. Yeah, we did 100, 100, 118 on first out lap, which I wasn't really expecting. Then I think best one out, out of four was 119.7. So I was well well happy with that really, yeah. I wasn't expecting to go. Fastest I've ever been on is 120.9. So to be to be pretty close to that already on first night after three years off and only ever doing one lap before I even set off around on my race bike, just on my brother's road bike. Uh, I am well happy. Just you could, I was sort of worried before I came over. Like, have I forgot some of it? Because I struggle to go. If I just sat and close my eyes and go around it in my head, I can't really do it. And then you like when you when you're riding around, you just it just unreals itself. Like as you, you one corner reminds you the next one, the next one, and the second lap you're not even thinking about the what corner's next. You're thinking about where you need to be on the road. It's already laid out in your in your head. It's weird, but yeah, you see, it soon comes back to you. So it's thirty-seven three-quarter miles, thirty-seven point seven three mm. miles, or whatever. Three quarters, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you prepare for something like that? Like before the first time ever came in 2017, I did like, I was probably watching three or four on board videos, Milky Quills, um, like guided ones with Johnny Barton. Watched maybe two or three of them every week for like a year and a half before I even came here. Then I came over and you like sort of learn that, so learn whether it's a left or a right corner. And then you come over and then you sort of look, you go around in a car and you see how steep it is, where the bumps are, all sorts of stuff like this. He's pulling funny faces at me. <laughs> pulling me. Um, so where the bumps are and stuff like that, uh, and then you sort of, but obviously only only learning that on one side of the road, and then you come over, then you let loose on your like your um, newcomers' laps. So then you're using the whole roads, and you've got to learn it all again. So like every time you learn it, you just learn it a little bit more in depth, in depth, in depth. But yeah, 
So and then once once it sort of clicks, then after from 17 to 18 coming here, I'd done I'd done a little bit of revision and stuff, but you'd, I was like Sims sort of worry like I don't know if I'm gonna forget loads of it. And then like first lap it was like I'd been there yesterday. It was just all just laid out straight away. It's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of big bumps I've I've, made, I've forgot about. Or oh, they met me after three years. The road could have easily sunk to be fair in places. So yeah, yeah, they probably weren't there. Yeah. The road, they maybe right? they maybe just weren't there three years ago to be yeah. fair. Okay. So. Coming back to sponsorship then, so we were just talking about who your main sponsorship would be. What's it like to try and bring the money together for, for someone in your position to come back? It's pretty, yeah, it's, it's expensive. I mean, like, uh, I don't know, all in, it's, a TT costs you like six, seven grand, you know, with your tyres and your fuel and your ferry, and yeah, then that's before you go smash your new 12 grand bike up that I did in 19. And, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just money, money, money. But yeah, I've got some really good sponsors this year. I've got SBM Logistics, Michelin have helped me out a lot. Um, there's there's a Northern Signs in Ripon that have wrapped that bike. Uh, I'm gonna have to have a look. I was thinking, I think who else it is? Uh, Ken Rodney Construction that I work for. <laughs> uh, National Bike Tires. Steve Geezer Taylor up at um, he's up at, um, oh, next to, next to Darling and he's he's helped me a lot with helped me a lot with the Michelins. Uh, yeah, it's just been Triton Engineering, Langver. They do a lot of oil and my pads for me and stuff. Yeah, it's just little bits like that. Like the oil doesn't sound a lot, but you're using like 500 quid of oil coming here because you change oil that much. And then your pads, you'll be using two or 300 quid for pads and your bikes. And then your tyres are two and a half, three grand. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, a set of tyres now is like 350 quid and using nearly a set of them sort of every every session, every, you know, every, every practice night and every race. So it's just like, just, yeah, 10 grand don't go far. <laughs> It, yeah, it? definitely, definitely, yeah. But no, they're uh, really good sponsors this year. It's uh, most help I've had by a long way so far, so we're getting there, we're getting there with it. We're well, I look there. forward to seeing what you deliver on these bikes. This Thank you very much, yep. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Cheers. Fighting fit, and uh, best of luck and enjoy. Thank you very much, yep. Cheers. Keep an eye on the content. We've got plenty more coming up over the next two weeks. I will see you very soon.